Let's shift our gears to nutrition because that's where I feel like a lot of women are stuck. Like I feel like every conversation I have with someone on the nutrition topic, it's like I'm looking at it like a deer is looking at headlights. You know, like (laughs) women are eating like 1,100 calories, 1,200 calories, thinking that it's going to help them drop fat, it's going to help them drop weight, drop weight, but they're not seeing the progress that they want to see. And in fact, they're gaining weight, they're losing muscle, or they're feeling just constantly exhausted. So. And they think that something's wrong with them, right? Like I, that's a narrative that I hate to hear. And I want anyone listening, want it's like it's that's not the case. You're not broken, and I want us in this conversation to help them see like it's one, it's not their fault, and two, it's like they're just they need the right strategy for where their body is at now. So, with all that being said, many women, like I said, are eating 1,100, 1,200 calories and wondering like why they aren't seeing the progress that they want or losing fat. Can you speak to the one to the danger of that, and it, especially for women that are in the phase of menopause and 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 going through that that journey, but more so the danger of just eating eleven hundred and twelve hundred calories. Yeah, it's not enough. Like yeah. we've been caught in this narrative probably from the hundred years of cardio stuff, where you know calories in, calories out, eat less, burn more. And we have to remember that inherently we are biological beings that require food. And if we are not eating enough to support just general health, the body perceives it as being a threat. Mm -hmm. And the body is like, wait, I want to stay alive. So I'm going to start conserving every possible high metabolic cost that I can. So if you're only eating 1,100 to 1,200 calories a day, that's not really even enough to touch a resting metabolic rate. Mm -hmm. We see on average a resting metabolic rate is around that 1,100 to 1,200 calorie point. So that's like lying in bed and not even blinking, right? So this is just the basic amount that your body needs to survive from all its breathing and heart rate and blood circulating and brain and everything. But as soon as you get up to pee, you need more more calories. Mm -hmm. It's like your body needs food to do all these energetics. And if you're not eating, your body's like, I'm bringing it all down. I'm only going to allow the essentials to work well. So I need to preserve the brain and I'm going to keep trying to fuel the brain. I don't have enough blood sugar. So I'm going to start using uh, some free fatty acids or ketones and amino acids. Where does that come from? It comes from your lean mass. Your lean mass is very metabolically active. And that's one of the first things the body is going to go after and say, hey, you're too metabolically active. I can't conserve you. So I'm going to break you down and use you for the sum of the parts. So when we start seeing women who aren't eating enough, we see this, right? They put on belly fat. They put on a lot of extra subcutaneous fat. They look a little bit puffy. They're losing lean mass. They're not responding to training. And then they can't sleep well, right? Because they're in the sympathetic drive where their body's in this really highly stressed state of there's no nutrition coming in. How am I going? Like I'm getting ready to fight or flight is that continuous feeling. Mm -hmm. When we get into the menopause transition, unfortunately, we see a big shift in body composition with this change in the hormones because the body is under a sympathetic drive. So that's why we are always thinking tired but wired because we're having these shifts and the body's under a little bit of of normal stress from these shifts because it's starting to find a new biological set point. So we start seeing conversations between the liver and free fatty acids that are floating in the blood, where now the liver is like, ah, I need to store you in and around the organs in case I need to be able to access you, which is why we get visceral fat. We also see that we have less ability for insulin to pull sugar into the muscle. We have more insulin resistance. And it's because the body's like, I need to conserve blood sugar. I need it for the brain. So there's all these things that are going because we're under a bit of stress. So if we're like, let's feed the body and let's train appropriately, we start to see better conversations across the organs, which allow us to not store visceral fat, but to take fatty acids and put it into the skeletal muscle to be used at rest to increase our body's ability to pull glucose into the skeletal muscle and the liver without insulin. So we start to see better metabolic health. If we're not feeding it, we don't even start to have an impetus on that. 
I feel like everybody needs to rewind the last, that whole last bit and just listen to it over and over and over again. Like I'm over here, I have chills and I'm screaming yes in my head because of all that you just said. Like, I'm so glad you just said that. And the way that you broke it down makes it so understandable as to what is actually going on. Because it's it's not like, like a lot of women know, like, hey, this is what's happening around in my liver. It's visceral fat equals this. Like, it's not, the brain doesn't compute like that for women that don't have the knowledge that you have um, or the bubble that we're in and we eat, sleep, breathe this kind of stuff. So I just, thank you. <laughs> That's well, the exact message that I just want to continue hammering home so women can understand how important it is to eat food um, and eat the right amount of food and enjoy it. Exactly. And enjoy it. Yeah. I don't how- like the stigma. Right. I mean, we all grew up in that stigma, like the, you know, the no carb, low carb, high carb, low fat, like all, there's always a stigma around one of the macronutrients. And so everyone has this disconnect about what it means to be nourished versus what it means to eat ultra processed food and be overfed and undernourished. It's like, I want people to come back to understanding a relationship with food that makes them feel good and to eat well and to eat and and have that benefit of being fed well. And you can't expect to build a strong body while you're underfeeding it. No, you need abundance, not overabundance from crappy food, but abundance to stimulate the hypothalamus to say, yeah, let's go in and build this muscle and let's get rid of this extra fat because we want more metabolically active tissue to help us do all these things that we want to do. 